Okay. Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here amongst you all in this virtual space. My name is Gregory Allen Dindy Jr. and I am excited to be the host for tonight's panel discussion. I'm the Director of National Programs for the Collegiate Black Male Network. Our organization's mission is to increase the persistence and graduation rates of collegiate Black males through mentoring. We are on a mission to see every African American male in college earn a college degree. This week, the Collegiate Black Male Network we are celebrating our third Founders Week. This is a moment to celebrate the work of our two founders, Dr. Daryl Hilton Jr. and soon to be Dr. Jamie Inge. Tonight, we are hosting our annual State of the Educated Black Man panel. This discussion is an opportunity to discuss the lives of educated Black men. We discuss the relationship between the multitude of identities they may hold, including socially and professionally. In a few moments, we will be beginning our State of the Educated Black Man Living the Dream edition panel. We will have a panel of guests who directly benefit from organizations with an interest in the support of Black male student success. We will hear about the role their respective groups play in their lives and see how they can combat the statistics against collegiate Black male success. So feel free to share this video with your friends, colleagues, and student success department because we are about doing the real work that changes lives. We will start with our panelists introducing themselves. I would like to make it known that I am super excited for our panelists. These gentlemen are current students. They do great work in their right, and I find it necessary that it be acknowledged publicly. Anyone who understands higher education post-COVID-19 knows how hectic it can be navigating through school. So first up, we have Jalen Mitchell. Come on, Jalen, introduce yourself. All right, well, good evening, everyone. My name is Jalen Mitchell. I am from Norfolk, Virginia. Um, and I currently attend George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, so two totally opposite sides of the state. Um, I'm a part of a few organizations, but the most assailing one tonight is I work for uh, Mason Center for Culture, Equity and Empowerment, um, which is our University Life Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Access Office. Um, and so I'm excited to be here. Um, just a little bit more about me, a hobby of mine is actually transcribing. I know it sounds weird, but I love transcribing old documents, um, especially texts from um, African-Americans who were learning how to read and write um, during the, during the you know, Reconstruction period. And around that time, it's, it's pretty cool trying to decipher what they wrote. Um, and I'm just so, so, so excited to be here. I'm um, looking forward to, to having these discussions with these um, wonderful young men who are on this call with Thank you for that, Jalen. Uh, Mr. Jawad Williams, you're up next. Introduce yourself, please. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jawad Williams. I'm from North New Jersey. I am currently a junior at Coppin State University. Uh, I am a part of multiple organizations on campus, but the one I'm here representing tonight is Royal Court. I serve as Mr. Junior on our Royal Court for the 2022-2023 academic year. And I would say one of my bigger hobbies, um, I'm a really big fan of music. So I like to collect all types of like vinyls and R&B vinyls to create like a wall full of them in my room. So, yeah. Okay, nice to meet you, Jawad. Next up, we'll have Henry. Hello, my name is Henry, of course. Uh, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I go to the Elizabeth City State University. Tonight, I'll be representing my org, Kappa Alpha Psi, Attorney Incorporated. I love it to death. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share my story. Nice, nice. And Keyshawn? Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Keyshawn Harris. I'm from Hampton, Virginia. Uh, currently, I attend the Elizabeth City State University where the org, the org I'm representing is, uh, of course, Kappa Alpha Psi, where I serve as the president of the Echelon Alpha chapter. Um, one of the hobbies I like is working out. I used to play football, so it just kind of stuck with me. But yeah, very excited to be here. Nice to meet you, sir. And last but not least, we have a member of our first cohort of Onyx 25, the one, the only, Mr. Curtis Shannon Jr. Mr. Shannon, take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Curtis Shannon Jr. and I am from Lima, Ohio, and I am currently a graduating senior at the illustrious North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. And um, a hobby of mine is, hmm, I currently, right now I'm currently getting into a lot of reading, um, especially because I'm going into law school. 
Um, and I'm just excited to be here. And as he said, I'm representing Onyx 25. I am an alumni of the first cohort, the Honorable Echelon. Yes. Let's give it up for y'all. I really want to thank you all for joining us again in our State of the Educated Black Man Living the Dream discussion. Tonight, we're speaking with students who are a part of orgs or initiatives focused on Black male success on their campus. So again, be sure to share this video with your friends, colleagues, and student success departments. Um, again, we're about business that is dedicated to the real work to change people's lives. So our questions this evening will be focused on the experience of those living the dream. So you might hear the word dream come up a few times in our questions. Um, the National Center for Education Statistics states that Black males have one of the lowest percentages relating to college enrollment and retention. As our expert panelists, our students are sharing their experience. Let's remember this. So we're going to keep that in mind, y'all. So the first question, former civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. is often quoted for his prominent I have a dream speech. As a collegiate Black male, what is your dream? So we're gonna get started with Jalen, then Jawad, Henry, Keyshawn, and Curtis. Sure, um, so my dream um, is to be the Secretary of Education um, for the Commonwealth of Virginia. I believe in the power of public education. Um, I believe that we can really shift um, the world and change the future. Um, when we are inside of the classrooms and what we decide to uh, present to students is, is really essential to, to the makeup of the world, right? I feel like so many times we ask, well, what happened here? What happened there? The main difference is that there are many discrepancies within the education system, even in the same state, sometimes even in the same city or the same area. You know, Keyshawn's from Hampton. So I know for a fact, Hampton's curriculum is much different than Norfolk's, Norfolk's curriculum. And while we are only miles away from each other, we're learning totally different things. Um, that's a problem when it comes to trying to build more productive um, citizens and, and, and just people in general. So I wanna right those wrongs that have, that have been inside of our education system, especially within the state. Um, people ask me all the time, why don't you want to be the National Secretary of Education? Um, that's nice. And I think that that's a lot of responsibility. Um, my goal is to make sure that I'm influencing the community that influenced me. And so that, that starts with the Commonwealth of Virginia. And when I'm ready to go national, I will. I love that. We have Jawad. Uh my dream personally is to be a child trauma therapist, especially for African-American children. Uh, I think growing up in an inner city community, we kind of see how, especially African-American young men aren't really given the chance to really heal from things that go on in their personal lives. And then we see that in today's public society and the people around us, how childhood trauma kind of affects um, young African-American women and men at a young age of how it carries over into their adult life. So kind of like he healing that inner child and set in stone and trying to assure them, you know, health and good wellness before they get to those pinnacles of life where they can't handle, like, you know, growing up as an adult and dealing with things from the past because I feel like a lot of people are limited and become limited from society because of things that they still deal with from previous parts of their life that they've never fully grown from. So trying to instill in children, you know, it's okay to feel feelings and understand that things that happen to you as a child isn't necessarily your fault. So we're trying to provide them that safe space for healing, especially for young men, because, you know, as always, Black men in society aren't really given that space to really express themselves and express their emotions without being looked at of lesser than of a man. And I kind of want to break that stigma that, you know, it's okay to have feelings as a man without trying to, you know, and still trying to grow at the same time. Thank you. Henry, what is your dream? My dream ultimately is to become a jazz professor at collegiate level. Um, I'm a music major right now. I love music and jazz is a very amazing American art form that we as African-American people can call our own. And I want to show that love and our passion to students, education system and build that up because jazz is not a very well-known thing taught in school, not like jazz programs. They have jazz bands, not jazz programs. So 
I want to make that culture well known to all people, especially our own people. Keyshawn, then Curtis. So essentially, uh, I want to become a criminal defense attorney. Um, I'm double majoring now in criminal justice and English. So of course, this is one of my many goals, but for a couple of reasons why I want to make it better for my family. Of course, that's, you know, sacrifice pretty much everything for me to get to the point where I'm at now. And then also, as a Black community, I feel we don't have enough Black male representatives in law. Right, you see a lot of us become police officers or like probation officers, things like that. But as Esquires, you don't see that many of us. So I kind of want to take a foot in that in that direction and then show the younger generation that this is something that you can achieve. You know what I mean? Thank you, Curtis. Um, hello everybody again. Um, as crazy as as it might sound, um, really and truly, I want peace. Um, in my afterlife. Um, and in my future, I say that because um, no matter what I do right now in this moment, it's only going to be in the aspect of me uh, aiding to the to the cause um, of change in which we've been fighting for so so um, for so long. And so, like my ultimate goal and dream right now is just like to have that sense of peace. Um, through all of that so yeah thank you gentlemen for sharing your dreams um the second question is former united states secretary of state colin powell once said a dream doesn't become reality through magic it takes sweat determination hard work what is the cost of your dream and so we're going to start with jawad then henry Keyshawn, curtis then back to jayla jawad i would say the cost of my dreams is kind of a uh, separation from the ones I love a little bit. Uh, because I am a psychology major, it does take a lot of time to really get into, you know, understanding what you're studying, especially trying to study children. And being that I go to college out of state, you know, I have a hectic work schedule and then being involved on campus, it kind of pulls me away from being back at home a lot, especially like with my friends and my family. And, you know, sometimes I really do feel bad because it's like I miss out on family events or, you know, when I come home for holidays, I'm only there for like a week or some change versus like a full month because, you know, it's like, you know, I got to get to school and, you know, it, it sucks, but I also try to realize at the same time, you know, I'm doing it for me and people that I want to help. So eventually, you know, that is the cause of like feeling separated from the ones I love the most. But I always feel like the ones that really understand know that I'm doing this to prepare myself for an adult life because a lot of the adults in my family have their lives. So I'm doing what's best that's working for me so that I could get myself to the next step. Thank you. We have Henry. What is the cost of your dream? Oh, well, me, my dream is music. But going to the education part, you have to have time. You have to practice. You have to put the work in. You have to have hard work, dedication, heart, determination. Because I'm just one person. This like nine point something billion people on earth. There's a lot of time out there. There's a lot of people who got that drive, that heart, that passion. And for anything, nothing gets done without hard work. So you have to be dedicated. Sometimes that means you can't go to that party. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be up all night with your friends. You just gotta buckle down. And that's the hard reality of trying to be the best, trying to be the best for yourself, but also be the best to have the best product for the public. All right, Keyshawn. So to kind of like what everybody else is saying, I think one of the main things that you sacrifice are relationships not with just your friends, but your family. But one of the biggest things that I sacrificed was actually playing my sports. So I started off playing football here for about probably two, three years. Of course, the COVID year kind of pushed everything back, but I had to take a step back and realize what is, you know, what what is it that I want to do? And I came to the realization that, of course, trying to get ready to take the LSAT, studying and getting all of these things, getting my ducks in order to become the attorney that I want to be, also being president of my my chapter and being a part of other organizations trying to make other people's lives better. So one of the biggest things was of course relationships, but actually sacrificing the sport that I've been playing since I was six years old. So 
I had to come to that, you know, realization. Thank you, Curtis. Um, I also do feel like uh, one of the costs is relationships uh, for my dream, but I also feel like that time and my mental health is also a big part of that because it's like we go into careers or uh, find our passions are more aligned with helping uh, people that look like us. And so it sometimes takes away from what we might like really want to do with our lives or we might just not know because our passions are, again, aligned with what we are faced in our day to day lives. And so um, I feel like sometimes uh, that costs your time and your your mental health because of the realization of what you got to keep fighting to do. So, yeah. Thank you. And Jalen, what is the cost of your dream? I don't know. That's a loaded question. Um, I've paid a lot. <laughs> um, I can we can talk about how much college costs. Literally, we can talk about the financial strain that college is, um, especially for my friends who are attending schools out of state. Um, that's a big, a big burden um, that many of us have to bear. But I think going even deeper than that, sometimes um, deeper than the than the friendships and relationships. Um, just like Curtis said, there are some um, times that our mental health is is at risk, right? I can say I go to a PWI um, and it is hard, very, very, very hard. Um, and there are some struggles that only we understand here, right? There are some things that, that we've gone through this sem last semester alone that, you know, so many people look here, look at me as the face of Black Mason, right? And while I'm honored to do that, it's a lot that comes with that. It's a lot of, of stress that comes with that. And so sometimes you just got to, you got to miss out on not only friendships and relationships, but sometimes you have to purposely not go to things, right? Sometimes you have to purposely remove yourself from, from this box of people to sit with this box of people to see what's going on in their circle, right? So some people have the fear of missing out. I don't really have that anymore. Um, I enjoy missing out because I can rest a um, B, I can practice. I'm also a music major, so I can practice. Um, I can I can do rehearsals, have rehearsals, go to the other orgs that I'm a part of, go to those e-board meetings and all that stuff, do everything that I want to do in order to ensure that, you know, I'm taken care of. That's something that I think so many times we as Black men don't do, right? We so busy out here trying to provide for everybody else, trying to do for everybody else that we forget about ourselves, so one one of the costs um, is is again my mental health. Um, I don't really miss out on anything anymore um, because I have I have a good circle that anytime I need to be in multiple places at once, I can send somebody over there and say, "Hey, here's what I need for this space. Can you make sure that you bring that back to me?" And then I'll be over here doing this, and we're all working, you know, collectively to to better Black Mason. Thank you for that, gentlemen. I think sometimes people forget that dreams do have a sense of a cost, and you all have shared each your own reality of what it costs to have your dreams. The next question is, playwright and Harlem Renaissance man Langston Hughes in his poem Dream says, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. How does your respective org group that you're a part of assist in your continuing to live your dream as a Black man? And with this one, we are going to start with Henry, Keyshawn, Curtis, Jalen, then Jawad. Well, my dream uh, deal with music, um, with me and um, my assistant band director, band director, who's also part of our chapter here, we're doing some collabs together, do some music for our chapter to get our chapter just a little loud up a little bit, just the camaraderie, because also with also just not just trying to get to that point where I can spread the love of jazz. I want to spread also community first. You got to start somewhere. Start small and bridge your way up. So that's something I can get used to, get my feet in the water and see how people react. And then as time goes, grad school, do the same thing over and over and just see what life takes it.
Could you repeat the question for me one time, please? How does your respective org assist in your continuing to live the dream? Okay. So as for me, um, since I've crossed this organization, a lot of my alumni brothers have been very pivotal in pointing me in the right direction because at a time I was kind of feeling lost because I didn't know what steps I needed to take to get to the next level as far as going to law school, getting grants and scholarship funds and things of that nature. So one of the biggest things they did was plug me into bros who are who are at the place where I want to be. Right. And they're they're kind of giving me a hand up, not a hand down, but a hand up to bring me to where they are and help me elevate. So that's one of the biggest things how I, this organization has helped me. Thank you, Curtis. Um, I'll definitely say as a alumni of Onyx 25, um, through my cohort, um, we actually were placed, was placed with very good mentors. Uh, one of my mentors being a brother of Kappa Alpha Psi, um, and I'm a brother of Phi Beta Sigma, so it was just like, ah, no, I'm just messing. But um, we ended up having a real good connection. Um, he wrote my recommendation for law school, um, which I ended up getting into law school. Um, and so, like, that was one of the ways that going through this program, uh, this organization really helped me with because it was just like something that. I didn't really just like, I guess, wholeheartedly see myself doing, but they kind of like uh, stayed behind me and stayed in my head and pushed me to do it. And so like, that was one uh, big thing as well as like um, through the cohort, I also was like Mr. Junior at my uh, university. Um, and they also wholeheartedly supported me uh, on my campaign to Mr. a &T, um, which I currently reign as. So like, that's how I can say that um, the CBM network has helped me. Thank you, Jalen. Um, so now that I work for um, CCEE, it's a little different than when I was a, just this regular student. Um, from a student perspective, um, we have different programming that we um, do in order to um, really promote diversity a, and then also give that sense of community. Um, I think so many times, especially here and at most PWIs, black men get lost in the sauce, right? It's like, we're here, but where are we? And so we do an excellent job in, in providing those connections to each other um, through different programming, you name it, um, different discussions, different conversations um, that some people are just scared to have or uncomfortable having those conversations. We also um, provide different kinds of um, experiences. So we've done different, different sorts of things from nature hikes to just bowling with friends and, and having a good time just chilling. Right. We have to find all of those spaces in order to a make sure that we can trust one another, because at the end of the day, we're all that we have. Um, but then from an employee aspect, from everything we we meet almost daily to say, how can we support our black men? Um, and so one of the wonderful programs that we have under our office is the Black Male Success Initiative, um, which is something that was started about two years ago now. And um, what we what we have decided to do was to be intentional um, about supporting black men on campus. At one point, it was like we had all these different organizations on campus. We had our BSA. We had you know the Black African Heritage and Caribbean Coalition. We had all of these things, but nothing specifically to support our black men on campus. And so um, we have hired faculty. Um, we've hired graduate assistants, and then we've hired actual black males within. Um, the university to come together and just be our think tank really and say this is what we want to see on our campus this is how we want to act and we make those dreams come true that's what we do here thank you jawar i would say uh being on royal court it kind of enhanced my sense of like wanting to do more with like my college experience. Uh, I started off on Royal Court as Mr. Sophomore last school year. So then I just kind of fell in love with the idea of being like community involved. And it's granted me a lot of opportunities to like just being a campus face, holding that position and doing a lot with it, connecting me with other kings and queens at different 
HBCUs in the state of Maryland, like in the DMV area, it's got me to meet other people and really just kind of just being out there and having fun and but also like, you know, doing it with grace and humbleness about it is kind of what helps me grow into a young man. And I'm just very appreciative of that because it's sometimes you wouldn't expect, I didn't expect like the, the biggest notoriety out of the position, but more and more every day I realize how impactful and how much how meaningful that somebody like myself serving on the Royal Court has done, not just for the students of my university, but also the staff members, various advisors of uh, community parents and even other HBCUs. So I kind of would just say, you know, have give, being that being that community face and bring like a warm feeling and a loving feeling to people is kind of what supported me and helped me. I truly love that. I feel as though, you know, it is all, always one of those things we want to have a community that helps to assist in our growth. And with that being said, if the Collegiate Black Male Network has not hit your campus yet, you know that we are coming and knocking at your door. You'll probably receive an email from me after this. Um, so I look forward to that. Uh, our next question is kind of one of my favorites, um, especially because within our community, a lot of people know this song reference. The question is, American rapper Robert Ramik Williams, professionally known as Meek Mills, highlights the reality that with all dreams, there are also nightmares. What are some barriers that exist as you are living the dream? We're gonna start with Keyshawn, then go to Curtis, Jalen, Jawad, then Henry. Shoot, <clears throat> so as far as barriers, I mean, it's, it's plenty. Of, we could talk about the racial barrier that we've been facing throughout all of history. We could talk about the barriers in the workplace or just in school. But one of the barriers that I know I face is just being really finding enough time um, to, to make stuff happen. That is one of the things that I've been trying to kind of like tuggle with. And it's, it's, it's harder than it seems and looks, but like as far as the racial barriers, we can talk about how just in being, trying to become a lawyer, how they don't, I don't want to get into all the, that type of, but you can, you can kind of see how they don't want us in certain places, if that makes sense, right? Because the more we elevate is the more they kind of get afraid. So um, I don't want to take all the way there, but those are one of the barriers that you can face in kind of living my dream. Um, I will say uh, one of the barriers currently, um, I, I feel like time is one of them. Also like, societal issues um, that are going on. But like one of the biggest things that I can say is myself um, because getting in my head and like getting overwhelmed with things going on or maybe taking in too much, um, I might be my biggest barrier because it's like I'm hindering myself from what I can really do or who I can really be. And so like, I feel like that right now, um, is my hindrance for me living my dream. Okay, it's me. Um, great. Um, I think sometimes, um, yes, I think I can be a, a hindrance to my dreams, but honestly, y'all, right now, it's politics, right? We have campus politics, that's a big part of it. But then also what people sometimes forget um, is that in public education, um, it is past the president, many of the decisions that happen. It's past the president. It goes on to the, the governor of whatever state you're in. And so I have had a few issues um, with our current administration. Um, and we can get into that later off the call. But there, my one of my favorite quotes is by C.R. Eliot. And he says that the moon still shines while dark skies surround it. And so do you. Um, so what surrounds you does not dictate it. There are a whole, there's a lot of negativity around us. There's going to be a whole lot of people who don't like us just based on what we look like, where we're from, even sometimes what our name is. There are some people who have smeared dirt on us even before they've met us because of the name that comes from an email. Yeah. And so I think um, Paula Fantana always says um, they will talk about your flaws when they don't understand your favor. 
And I think that that is so that is so true. We all have these special gifts and abilities that we should tap into that we don't, right? Um, so yeah, the governor um, for me has been a big hindrance this year um, and has been a big hindrance to to my dream, which is another reason why I really wanted to be the secretary of education for the state. Um, because I realized that if the governor has all of this power um, and he is the one to elect the person who's supposed to be in charge of education, then put me in charge, put me in coach. I got, I got some new, some new tricks for y'all. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I am. Okay. We'll have Jawad then Henry. I think sometimes my biggest hindrance would be uh, myself, like Curtis said, I know for me, sometimes I tend to overextend myself and give too much of myself to everything else around me except for me. And then that kind of like drains me. Like I know I really struggle with like making sure that I'm okay and that I'm like, I'm good. Like I'll give to everybody. I'll show up to everything. I'll make sure I do this and go to this school event. But then when you look at, you know, my schedule or I be trying to figure out, and my friends try to figure out like, when do you sleep? And I just like, oh, you know, like play it off. But more and more as I've gotten into my college career, I've noticed that that's my biggest hindrance. I'm tending to overextend myself and not giving myself an opportunity to breathe and just like live in the moment rather than worrying about what's to, what's coming next right after this, what's coming next right after that. So slowly I've been trying to stare away from putting so much on my plate without giving myself an opportunity to breathe. I think um, that's a loaded question. <laughs> but of course, we all agree that ourselves, for one, it's, it's really easy to get in your head. You got to persevere. But I'll also say for me personally, could be the, a lot of the racism, I guess, we deal with day to day, or us being Black, especially in the field of music. Because like I said, uh, jazz is an amazing art form. I was just going to do a Cleveland jazz professor. And with jazz, uh, it's our music. But you have other people, uh, other ethnic or races who also love jazz. Nothing is wrong with that. But then it comes to a point when you try to say something about jazz history, but then it's like, it's our history. So sometimes not all facts are always there. And then you want to conflict. So, oh, this is how you do it. This is not how you do it. But it just, everybody want to be right, but somebody got to be wrong. <laughs> I am definitely appreciative of you all sharing. Um, thank you for the moment. We're gonna head um, right towards our last question. So we're winding down to the final question. Again, it's been great to be in conversation with you all. And I want to make sure I give a shout out to each of you and your respective uh, orgs or groups um, dedicated to black male success on your campus. Anyone who is listening in, be sure to follow and stay connected with us. Um, our final question is going to be, American professional boxer, Muhammad Ali shares, Champions aren't made in the gyms. Instead, they are made from something deep inside of them, a desire, a dream, a vision. How can our audience, viewers, and supporters of the Collegiate Black Male Network support your dreams? We'll start with Curtis, then go to Jalen, Jawad, Henry, then Keyshawn. Um, I'll say by supporting my dream would pretty much Continue doing the work that you're already doing. Um, continue leading the way, leading from the front and setting a path for people that look just like me to come uh, after me um, or before me in any of these moments, just to make sure that they have the opportunity, the chance, the experience to, to see what greatness is in a Black male. And so, um, yeah. Jayla? Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, y'all. I just feel like sometimes we we overthink a lot, yeah? And so I think sometimes we just got to take a step back and think of the bigger picture of things, right? We can, we can have all of these lofty ideas, but then it's all about, like, the execution and stuff. So how are we, how are we actually going to execute our dreams in, in all of this conversation? Like, even once we leave here, we still have the same dreams, but how will we walk away differently than what, when, from whence we came, right? So I think that that is, that's just kind of where I am with, with this question. I know it might seem like, what, 
<laughs> but it's it's a thing of of making sure that that we are focused, right? I love the term focus on the focus, like so you know what you're what you want to do, and that's what you should be focused on. But then make sure that that's what you accomplish. Don't don't sell yourself short of that. Like you 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 are too valuable for you to sell your short, yourself short of, of of what you want. Do I? Sorry, I had to get that together. But I think for me, it's just a matter of, I always tell people like, I prefer you to be yourself rather than something that you're not. And I think that's the most important thing to me, like as an individual, is just spreading individuality and making everybody understand. I think being you is one of the biggest parts of, you know, life. You can't go on into anything without adding your own spin on who you are as an individual. And I think sometimes, especially with social media, that we kind of get wrapped up in trying to figure out who we are. But I think, especially for, I tell my friends, you know, I don't care what it is about you, no matter your flaws, your greatnesses, but your accomplishments, what you don't accomplish, like you're still my friend, my family, I love you. And I think that's one thing that I try to preach to everybody, you know, doing what's best for you and making sure like you stay true to yourself is like one of the biggest parts about life because you, you kind of write your own journey as you stick to what you believe in, your morals, your values, you know, and your beliefs. So just kind of holding that sincerity in anything that you do, you know, taking every step forward with what you believe in and your dearest heart. And that's how you kind of like get to life from there. Thank you, Henry. How can our audience support your dreams? Lots of, uh, if everyone has some kids, put them in jazz band. <laughs> like spread the culture of music. Uh, music is amazing. Everyone should experience music, um, but in case of jazz specifically, it's just uh, a genre that's not really supported a lot in school, especially our own schools, HBCUs be exact. You see them at other institutions, uh, PWIs, which is very interesting to me. Nothing's wrong with that, but it's interesting because that's um, African, that's our roots, our, our music from the coast of Ghana all the way to New Orleans to here in the United States. So that itself is very fascinating. And that's what I want to try to get back into the us as people and back to the school system here in the United States that we can bring that to ourselves. We're going to rely on somebody else. Okay, Keyshawn. So it's a very good question. Um, to answer your question, I believe avenues like this is a good way to, you know, support my dream because this is great exposure for all of us to be able to spread a good word, right? So I believe that younger kids or kids my age or people my age should experience this. Um, my cousin is a is an example of that. Uh, he passed away, well, got killed about a year ago. I feel like if he was able to see stuff like this, people his own age being able to achieve things such as this, that he would have went down a different path. So this is one of the reasons why I even crossed this organization is to be able to spread this message that this is something that is obtainable, right? Because I don't feel like as Black men, we see things like this on a regular basis. We just see what's around us. We can never see the bigger picture because it's so far away. But we have to put them glasses on and search. <clears throat> so I think this is one of the ways, uh, just exposure, just showing this to kids my age or kids younger than me, people even older than me, they need to see this. So that's one of the ways that my dream can be supported. Thank you so much for that. I wanna thank you all for joining the Collegiate Black Male Network's annual State of the Educated Black Man panel. As we're celebrating our third Founders Week, please be sure to engage with us and stay connected throughout the week. We are on a mission to see every Black male in college earn a college degree. Thank you all.